So uh, after our conversation recording? yesterday, okay. um, I woke up with like, oh yeah, it goes there, yeah, that fits there, it just seemed really brilliant. And then I looked at my notes and it's not really maybe quite that brilliant, but um, <laughs> but I think it's useful, we'll see. Um, we talked about the two essential ingredients around healing sexuality are addressing shame and empowerment. And <coughs> that you may not be doing those directly, or you may not be addressing shame directly by talking about it and like working on stuff with it, but you are addressing it simply by being accepting and welcoming of the person exactly where they are and seeing them well, hearing them well. Um, uh, and empowerment is what I, what I want to play with here a little bit. That what leads to change is awareness. You have to become aware of things that you weren't aware of before in order for change to happen. So, so that's leading to that's part of what leads to empowerment. And we define empowerment as the ability to make a change uh, in the around you in the world. And your ability to uh, make a choice about yourself. Just in general terms. Yeah. So in order to increase awareness, and we, we, we mentioned all these yesterday, but I was realizing how they kind of fit together. In order to increase awareness, you need safety, which is a feeling, not a fact. You actually have no such thing as safety, because you will be offended, you will get hurt, you will have things will happen to you, you get sick. You're going to die. You're going to die. So it's actually, there's no such thing as safety. But there's a feeling of safety or a sense of safety. It's relative, of course. So when the safer that you feel, the more you will dive into what's already challenging for you. And you'll do so gladly because we have an urge to, to get some help and support and clean those things up. So uh, safety is the, the big factor there. So what also uh, brings awareness is slowing down you slow down and simplify what you're doing. And that's what the three minute game taught me. That's what it did for me. It, it made me slow down and bring it in. What I noticed as I was playing with the first few hundred people was that, oh, this is extremely simple. These are the fundamental pieces of all interaction. I'm asking for something, and you're, you get to decide whether you're a yes or no. Like, that's fundamental. Um, so, a three minute game and other similar things. You slow it down, you simplify it, that's going to automatically increase your awareness. You might have done this with um, uh, body work or movement work or like fell in Christ, where you take one step and you're noticing all the things about your foot that you didn't notice before which you wouldn't notice if you're running down the street, but because you take this tiny little piece of it, now you can notice more of it. So the other thing that brings awareness is give them something to notice. So in the feeling the object with your hands, they have an opportunity to notice what the sensation is. But also, have, because you've simplified and slowed down, you're also going to notice, oh, what are the feelings that come up? Worse that I may get tender hearted or I may cry or I may get embarrassed or ashamed or I may get blissed out and I may just like, wow, this is fun. So you, and the same thing with the, with the three minute game, you're asking them how do you want me to touch you. Now they have an opportunity to notice what it's like to be asked that question, which you know, most of us aren't asked that question. So, so giving people something to notice is part of awareness, and then asking them, what do you notice?
And I can't tell you how many hundreds of times a day I say that, and you've heard me say it in here. What are you noticing? What are you noticing? Um, so all of these are combining and conspiring to increase awareness, which then allows empowerment and growth and change. So, but before that, there's some another piece that needs to be in there. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before that, there's another piece, and that needs to be the agreement. What's our agreement? What are you here for? What's our agreement about what I can offer and what you're seeking? So the first thing we have to do is we have to find out what they're there for. What their dreams are, what their fears are, what, what, what they'd like help with. Um, one of my favorite ways to ask that is, what would you like easier and better for yourself? Or... If you, if you have your, if your sex life was just heavily exactly how you wanted it, what would it look like? Because as you notice, probably, when people say the word sex, there's no telling what picture's in their head. Because <laughs> it's just a, such a huge variety. And intimacy is another one of those things. Who knows what they're talking about? So it takes some asking, a sort of teasing out, um, Encouraging them to talk, asking questions about, you need to find out what, what they want. And so it might be that they're not there for coaching at all. They're there for F FBSM and cool, now you know that's what we're there for. If, if they want change, awareness, liberation, and growth, that's a very different path. The FBSM can bring a lot of those things, and just a, a you know an hour and a half of pleasure can bring lots of change. But if they're consciously wanting change, awareness, liberation, growth, then make a little room here. Then they're going to have to become become more aware of lots of stuff, lots of stuff they weren't aware of before, right? So there's going to be surprises, and they need to be kind of warned this. Yeah, I can totally help you with that and some things that would help. And if you want to get from here to there, there's going to be some surprises, and there's going to be some feelings that arise. And I think it's only fair to tell people that, because our, our cultural tendency is to want to avoid that. So um, there'll be some feelings that arise, and I'm going to support you through those. It's basically permission, right? Like saying it is what you're doing and giving permission. Yes. And buying them. Yes. And, and, and buying. Yeah. And I want them to choose that. I'm not, I don't want to choose what I think they should learn, although, believe me, it's in my head. You need to learn that or that. But they, they get to choose what they want to learn. It's not always what we think they want to learn. In, in chiropractic, we learn that not everybody uh, actually wants full, vibrant health. Most people want to just have enough less pain to go about their lives again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's often true with sexuality. We may think, oh, we want to bring enlightenment and all this whole thing, but they just want to know how to not come so fast or whatever. So that's an important thing for your marketing. PS. Yeah, yeah. It's an important thing for your marketing, which we'll get to. Will you say more about that later? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your agreement, your first step is to find out and then have this conversation. Yes, if this is what you want, we can do that. There's going to be some surprises, there's going to be some feelings that arise. And what I often say is you're going to have to question some things that you know. And is that something that you want to do? That interests you. Given the caveats, do you still want to move forward? Um, and it's also going to be fun. Because it usually is fun. Because th I think this is really fair because they, they may not really be planning on that. Yeah. You know? 
And it's also, it's a strength of mind to support them emotionally. You'll have different strengths, and you may bring some other things in here, but that's a lot of what I do. I think of it more generally. It's, this is an attitude that I'm mm -hmm. telling them they're kind of going to need if they really want it. If they really want to liberate themselves and show up and have their sexuality blossom, they're going to be questioning something. Uh, and that's going to happen on the course of our journey. You're not saying you as a practitioner should be questioning what That's you know. correct. Well, that's, yeah. all, that's also that's true of us. But so this is this is part of this if on. statement up yeah. here of yeah. if you, if they want change, awareness, liberation, and growth, then these are the things they need to be looking yeah. at, and then getting them to opt in. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so so that's the the first step is the agreements piece, and the first step of that is finding out more about what they want. So then once you have the agreement, then these are the things that lead to their increased awareness. The sense of safety, uh, slowing down and simplify. So that means not only slowing down all the steps of the cool things that you can do, but quite literally moving your hands slower. The Boston massage is extremely slow, for example. And the, the Boston massage, you know, we learned it in a basic format, but you can uh, apply it and expand it in lots of ways. But you learn the basic structure of it. And that's an example of slowing way down so that they are setting the pace, not you. And then give them something to notice. Um, and slowing down and simplifying will give them something to notice. And then ask them, what do you notice? What do you notice? What do you notice? What's happening? Um, that brings in, it, it, it lets them notice that they are noticing. Like, you know, they may have a visceral response of like, okay, well, the fear's coming up or whatever. But if, the, if they don't notice it consciously, it's of some use, but it's not that much use. If they can say, oh, I notice my gut is funny, now there's something that, that's more useful to them. And then all that together is leading to their empowerment, which is the main theme that we were talking about. Um, and it, in particular, the, the power of choosing what happens to you, choosing what is done to you. We don't always get to choose what happens to us in our lives, but, but as much as possible we want to have the experience of choosing how we're touched. When you understand the principles, then you can see how they apply differently in your particular situation. So for empowerment, what, as we were talking about a little earlier, they must learn to request. There's no way around it. And most people uh, are way back in kindergarten in here, or preschool. I mean, we're only in first grade, so, you know. Um, I'm totally a second grader. It, well, that's true. Marsha's a second grader. <laughs> and, uh, and they must have a somatic experience of that. You can talk about learning to request, you can make a few practice requests, um, but you must have a somatic experience of it in order to change your relationship with your own empowerment. It's got to be in the body. Mm -hmm. And you must repeat it. A lot of times, you'll have, you play the three minute game once and you'll have a They'll be an aha, and then you, okay, well, they've got that, and you send them off, but you didn't learn it at one time, did you? Like, we don't need. We just need to feel it again, 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 and then our bodies begin to realize, oh, this is what's happening. I, I, I am choosing what's happening to me, which then contradicts all those old beliefs about the nature of reality is that stuff just happens to you. 
That's the piece that we're reversing. And why do we need all those? Because without that, the client, or us when we're, um, yeah, because without that, we will adapt to the activity. We will adapt ourselves to the activity or the program or what's expected. The thing that's been so amazing to me over the years is just how deep and pervasive is our tendency to do what we think we're supposed to do. And that, that will be the default until this, it gets replaced with this, the request. The other reason why is that, and we mentioned this a minute ago, because they will hear your offer as a request or a suggestion or as simply a statement of this is what's going to happen, which throws them, of course, right back into going along with the program. And the challenge is that you as the practitioner won't see this. Well, now you will, but for the most part, you, you won't see this. You won't see that they're adapting themselves to your modality because your eyes are on your modality. Your eyes are on this cool trick that you know, this G-spot massage, this pelvic thing in the jig, this cool body block. Um, so you won't see it. won't see that that's happening because your eyes are in the other direction on the modality. Which is valuable. I don't want to, I, I, I don't, don't dismiss those at all. They're really valuable. The, the, your, your idea, your eyes are on the modality, the activity. But what actually changes people is not the activity. Uh, it's their experiencing of noticing what they want, learning how to trust what they want, learning how to value what they want, learning how to communicate what they want, and then have an experience based on that. That's what changes people. Not the fact that you do this cool thing with your hands. So what changes people is their inner experience, not the outer experience. It's the inner experience that changes them, and the inner experience is based on them noticing and choosing. So it's the noticing and choosing where all the good juju is. It's where their empowerment comes from, it's where all the healing comes from. And if when you understand that that's what you're actually doing, then all the rest of the stuff makes sense. And the, the whole emphasis of your sessions shifts. Okay, so so another way to picture this. Here's you. And um, so someone says, how would you like to be touched? And you sort of ask your body, what do you want, hon? And your body says, Legs. I want my legs touched. <laughs> and then, <laughs> your body and your brain. You just got angry. Oh, oh yeah. The this body. is the brain. <laughs> the brain. That's the brain. Yeah. So the little brain lights up and says, legs. Now you have a choice. Do I trust that information? Because you might not. It's not like we're taught how to by any means. Yeah. And then do you value it? Does it matter? Well, my legs kind of would like scratching, but that's probably not the right thing to ask for. And then you communicate it. And you communicate it to this other person over here. And they decide yes or set limits or whatever, that have that negotiation. And then the action happens on your leg. Right? So most of us 
are focusing on this part, the doing stuff part. And so, in order to get to this part, we're doing just a, oh wait a second, this should be notice. First thing is that you notice it. Notice, trust, value, communicate. So most of us are so focused on this part that in order to get here, we do just enough of this to give us permission to get going. So we sort of skip over this. And what I'm saying is that this is really not all that important. This is the important part. Because this is now useful in their lives. And now they can, now, now there's an infinite number of things that this could become based on what they want. And one of the common questions that comes up is, well, what if they don't know that this blissful experience is possible? Isn't it useful to take them into this whew, fabulous place? Yeah, sometimes, if that's what they're asking for and if they've already showed that they have enough ability to, to communicate and, and, and to handle that much stimulus. But there's no guarantee that they have that ability. The ability to handle pleasure is usually built. But when, you, when they learn this, then lots of options. Then they can do more. Then they'll think, oh, well, I also like this, and I also like that, and wow, now I could ask for that. Who on here thought of that before? If you think back of your experience with uh, being on the table or erotically or playing that you you're, you learn gradually that, oh, there are more options. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is an option? And oh, wow, this is an option? But you didn't know those options to begin with. So once this is clear and strong, and that's a lifelong process, then these options just get huge. There's no end to those options. And then they're useful because they're not overwhelming. It occurs to me, too, that the reason we focus on action is it's the externally visible thing. It's, you can't really see people noticing, trusting, valuing. Sometimes you can see them communicating. But when you think about how sexual services are sold or sexual products are sold or sensuality is sold and packaged, it entirely focuses on the action because it's the only thing that can be mediated. It's the only thing you can show in media. And yes. so much of what we learn about sex is mediated. How did you learn to kiss with your eyes closed? You saw it in the movies. Why do they kiss with their eyes closed in the movies? Makes better movies. Makes better, doesn't. It, it looks weird when people have their eyes open on film. That's why people kiss with their eyes closed. Why do people eat pussy like this? Because that's what they saw in porn. So the focus on the action and how people learn, like all we can, all we, because we're not given permission to have that direct route, the only thing we can do is the indirect route to pleasure. It's all externalized, it's all what we see. That experience of noticing, trusting, valuing is so powerful for your clients. And it's, I, I think it's really important to just know that there's like pressure from capitalism to like <laughs> make it look good, but their subjective experience doesn't necessarily depend on the actions at all. Absolutely. Oh, also that's our, that's our not just sex, but that's our whole cultural norm. Mm -hmm. What counts is the stuff that you can see and that gets built and created and sold. And that's what counts. Yeah. Which is where nurturing so is a value. We're, we are totally so steeped in that paradigm that it's the stuff that happens is what counts. That's true if you're building a bridge. You want the thing to stand up, so you got to do it right. So it's, it's not that that's a non-valid way to be, but in our culture, that's kind of the only way. It's very hard to come back and the work that we're doing of increasing our own awareness and then helping other people increase theirs, that's radical stuff, mm -hmm. completely opposite of what everything's been possible. 